Your Word is Your Wand by Florence Scoville Shin. This discussion is on reflections of quotes from her book, which I happen to be a huge fan of her work because she's very much into the depths and realization of the power of affirmations. The reality is we are always affirming. This is also referred to as our inner dialogue or inner conversations, what we say when we talk to ourselves. In the traditional sense, we create affirmations, we craft them, or more accurately put, we receive them from within, in relation and in harmony to our vision, our ideal outcome. When creating affirmations, when working with the power of words, it's important to reflect upon a few key principles. Number one, all things exist. All of reality is complete right now in the eternal now. Number two, so it is stated in the Bible, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. And number three, all things are possible to him that believeth. These important catalysts can help us craft our words and formulate our affirmations to be in alignment with what we want to see brought forth, as well as the journey to the destination. If all is complete and everything exists right here in this eternal now, and we can see it in our imagination, which is called the unseen reality, then one day, if we hold true to our words, we will experience it in what we would call the seen reality or the five sensory world. Now, she states and quotes here, man's word is his wand filled with magic and power. Jesus Christ emphasized the power of the word. By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned and death and life are in the power of the tongue. So man has the power to change an unhappy condition by waving over it the wand of his word, essentially the power of our words. In the place of sorrow appears joy. In the place of sickness appears health. In the place of lack appears plenty. Power of words. So reflecting deeper upon this, we see that conditions are externalizations of the inner conversations, the subconscious affirmations, or the conscious affirmations. What we say when we communicate to ourselves about ourselves in relation to people. When the inner conversation changes, the interpretation and the experience of the five sensory world changes, which expresses through behavioral change, transformational change, environmental change. The cause is within. If you reflect upon all the changes that you have experienced in your life, notice how prior to the change, your inner conversations changed. Affirmations or inner conversations or inner dialogue. It was the reflection of the words that was experienced in what we call five sensory reality. The words have the power to stimulate our imagination. And the imagination is selecting from the already complete unseen reality to be experienced in reality via the power of our words. She says, there is no truth in lack or limitation. He waves over it the wand of his word, and the wilderness rejoices and blossoms as the rose. One of our goals is to remove day by day and exclude out of our consciousness the idea of limitation. Now, this may appear as a daunting task if we have constantly been affirming through reaffirmation of outer world circumstance the idea of limitation. 
limiting ourselves, limiting others, limiting based on how we communicate. We only need to reflect upon our inner conversations and ask the question, is our conversation one of limitation in relation to what we desire to experience? Is our inner voice conversation in limitation to people, environment, circumstance, and information, knowing that those elements of experience are externalizations of our own interpretations within, via our inner conversations? And as we identify this conversation, these affirmations, we can change them by being conscious of how we use the words internally. And what we'll notice in what follows could be right away, could be that day, could be days and weeks, is gradual change or many times in my experience, dramatic change. For me, I've had a number of interactions with clients and prospects in the entrepreneurial space. For whatever the reason, I assume them to be a certain way. These assumptions played out as inner conversations in my own mind. And then they would show up to receive the service and the theater would play out of my inner conversation, which would be disempowerment in relation to them and myself as the service rendered plus the theater. In other words, a stressful way of delivering the service. Once I realized that this was the causative factor, my interpretations of them, I changed my interpretations of how they appear to be to me based on my inner voice conversations. And what I noticed is that they began to behave differently. They began to accurately represent and affirm the inner conversations, the word within and reflect accordingly as the experience while I was performing the service. In other words, the ideal experience. The same is to be said when I was doing a lot of public speaking events on behalf of Iris Reading, as far as partnership goes. There was one time in 2018 where I did about 16, where I did 16 flights in 30 days. It was a very joyous experience. And I wanted that experience. I wanted one day that to be the experience, to fly around, enjoy life experiences, and teach. In the earlier stages, the first experiences that I had in that workshop, I would observe my inner conversations. This was while I was building my IT business around 2010. I would observe my inner voice conversations and also observe that the audience, the room would reflect the exact precision of my inner voice conversations. So I went to work on it. I changed my inner voice conversations and what I noticed is they would change. So now what I do is I, on a daily basis, change that inner conversation in relation to not just people, but environment, circumstance, and information to be in relation and in harmony via affirmation or inner voice conversation. As mentioned, there's only four modalities that I work with when it comes to working with the subconscious mind. They are self-talk, revision, subconscious mind audios, and environment. And I did a discussion on these. I'll put a link in the description. Happiness and health must be earned by absolute control of the emotional nature. Power moves, but is never moved. When man stands calm and serene, he has good appetite, feels content and happy when appearances are against him. He has reached mastery. Then he has the power to rebuke the winds and the waves to control conditions. Now in the earlier stages, this might seem like impossibility. That's why we always try it and realize that we were always actually doing it. All progress that has been made has been a result of a change of mind, a change of the reflections of mind. As Neville Goddard puts it, speech is the image of mind 
and by speech we're speaking of the inner conversations, the power of our words. She says his word is his wand, and he transmutes apparent failure into success. Keyword, transmute, transmutation. The ability to change the meaning and actually experience as a result one circumstance that could be labeled as obstacle, transmute it internally by your assumption within as opportunity. Now, this is extremely powerful for the entrepreneur. And upon working with this, I found many effects that were a result. For example, looking at relationships from multi-dimensional perspectives. I realized that a client can also be a referral partner, can also be a vendor, can also connect me with others that I could do further business deals with. They could be mentors. They can be teachers. They could be those that provide me further optimization data as to what to do next. Rather than looking at them as just a client, which is an effect of a certain way of thinking, looking at each person as a linear interpretation from what is within reveals it to be so. But when we say there's a multidimensional nature behind what we are interacting with in the five sensory world, be it people, environment, circumstance, or information, we begin to reveal it within. That is a result of transmuting the meaning via the words within and looking at something that may seem as limiting or an obstacle into multidimensional and opportunity. Now, the same is to be said about resources. What I realized from working with this information in the entrepreneurial space is that every business has many different resources and assets within their scope of awareness. They also have access to relationships that have many different resources and assets within the scope of awareness. Through the connecting and combining, and I recommend you watch the video that I did on Jay Abraham's book as he discusses it further in his book, Mr. X and Getting Everything You Can Out of All You've Got. I'll put the links in the description. You're able to identify the assets and resources and be able to combine them in creative ways to create success. For example, one of my clients, when I had my IT business, also owned a bar in Toronto. I was friends with another bartender and she had nothing to do on a Tuesday night, but she had a huge list of people that would literally follow her around wherever she goes, whatever event she runs. She wasn't doing anything on a Tuesday. So I approached my friend who owned the bar, who I was doing IT services for. And he said, we're not open on a Tuesday. It would be nice if we could do something. And I said, what if I bring in someone that has access to a whole bunch of people and we do a Tuesday night event. Can we work out a deal? So what ended up happening was we did a revenue split, percentage of sales, and she got a percentage of that as well as she got to keep all the tips. So it was complete spirit of harmony. She got her benefit. My client and friend got his benefit. I got my benefit. And those that were looking to do something on a Tuesday night in Toronto had a place to go in a very popular area where there was nothing open on a Tuesday night. All of this is a result of looking at relationships, resources, assets, what is in the five sensory world from multidimensional perspectives. These multidimensional perspectives are a result of the inner conversations that we have within ourselves. So she lists some very good affirmations here. Let's talk about these. The decks are now cleared for divine action and my own comes to me under grace in a magical way. So when we release from rigid thinking, go into a place of what I call fluidity of mind, we find 
mystical, magical, elusive, obvious ways of creating success. They were always there, but we didn't see it because our inner dialogue and our inner affirmations did not reflect. She also says, endless good now comes to me in endless ways. If you believe that endless good comes to you, then whatever you see will reveal the endless ways of working with that information to create success. Number three, I sweep all before me, for I work with the Spirit and follow the divine plan in my life. Now, the divine plan of your life is revealed to you via your inner conversations with what I would call the true inner voice. We're not referring to the mental chatter that is externalizing and creating unnecessary convolution in the five sensory world. We're speaking of the true inner voice that speaks of limitless potential, which happens through you, through your heart desires, through your visions, through your aspirations, and through what Neville Goddard puts really well and says, putting off the former conversation. What is the former conversation? The former conversation represents any disempowering programming in relation to yourself and the outer world, people, environment, circumstance, and information that have nothing to do with the reality that you are on the journey to the fulfillment of what you desire to create. Words that represent that it is already done. That is the accurate conversation. And this conversation happens within. And it is found beyond the mental chatter of limitation, fear, doubt, and indecision-based programming, and is affirmed through affirmation on how we communicate when we talk to ourselves and what we say when we talk to ourselves. Watch the video I did on what to say when you talk to yourself. So, in other words, we're going from reactivity to proactivity. Proactivity as in, here is the externalization of our inner dialogue. And we don't need to react to it. We change the inner dialogue, which is proactive, and observe as it externalizes. She says, when man knows that there is an invisible power that protects him and all that he loves and brings him to every righteous desire of the heart, he relaxes all nervous tension and is happy and satisfied. He is undisturbed by adverse appearances knowing that infinite intelligence is protecting his interests and utilizing every situation to bring his good to pass. So here are some affirmations to further affirm this idea. That the answers are found within. The access to infinite intelligence is within. Everything is in contribution and helping you achieve what you desire to create. If you only let go of certain beliefs and ideologies and assumptions that would be part of the former conversation, which would be disempowering towards yourself and others. Here are the affirmations that she gives. My endless good now comes to me in endless ways. I am harmonious, happy, radiant, detached from the tyranny of fear. My good now flows to me in a steady, unbroken, ever-increasing stream of happiness. As I am one with God, I am now one with my heart desire. As she states here, the belief must be neutralized in order to change conditions. This is happening within. We change our beliefs within, and the conditions change. How we interpret reality changes. As the saying goes, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Well, when we change the way we converse about things internally, the things that we converse about change. And the change will reflect the accuracy and precision of these inner voice conversations. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we change it. We make a commitment that we are going to change our inner dialogue and observe the changes as the effects of the externalization of the changes within. As in, what are we imagining, which is revealed in our inner dialogue with the mental chatter or the true inner voice, 
and observing the externalizations on the screen of space to reflect and adjust accordingly. She gives us very important words of wisdom, which I'm a huge fan of. Let's talk about these. Loving your neighbor means not to limit your neighbor in word, thought, or deed. When we're having inner voice conversations about people, are we talking to them in our own imagination as limitation to only experience the conflict, only to experience the conflict externalized as we interact with them? She also says, never argue with a hunch and never hinder another's hunch. See, what we're dealing with here is intuition. It's the understanding, the inner voice, the hunches, the inspirations, the signs and synchronicities that are revealed via intuition that are guiding you to where you are looking to go. And this where you are looking to go has already been affirmed as done by committing to it in the beginning. Inner commitment, affirming it. Once it has been affirmed, the destination where you desire to see experience in what we would call the five sensory world, which is already existing in the unseen reality and thus will be experienced in the seen reality, we are guided from within via our intuition. As Steve Jobs put it, don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. What this means is that nobody's trying to drown out your inner voice. We're creating the meaning within and assigning it to people, saying that they have the power to drown out our own inner voice. This is more and beyond giving the power away. It is accurately put of assigning the power within with that meaning. As stated here, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And she says, The kingdom of heaven is the realm of perfect ideas. Very important reflection. The kingdom of heaven is the realm of perfect ideas, and all of that is found within. The realm of your perfect ideas, what we would call the heart desire, already exists in the unseen reality. And the journey, which is the inner voice dialogue and conversation that we have within ourselves, which we can change, we have the power to change that, is found within in what we would call accurate interpretation, accurate assumptions, accurate beliefs, found in the world within. Yes, it can be inspired through information, books, videos, programs. Those are externalizations of our own consciousness to affirm within. And we can go in and find it within. Perfect example, you go through experiences that you had today. You found that you were in conflict with somebody. You reflect at the end of the day and you say, what was the inner conversation I was having prior to having that experience? Maybe it was an hour prior. Maybe it was a day prior. Maybe it was a week prior. Maybe it was an ongoing conversation, a recurring one. And then we find our assumptions, our beliefs, our interpretations of them, how we believe them to be. We write down, received within, how we would like to see them be. We turn those into affirmations. We record those affirmations. We fall asleep to those affirmations. Or we carry on inner conversations with ourselves throughout the day that affirm those affirmations. Or we visualize and imagine it to have played out the way we ideally would have had it played out. And realize that by doing it, it's an act of faith, believing that it actually did play out that way. and observe the changes. And once we see the changes, as stated, they can be gradual or instantaneous, then we'll truly understand what she's referring to here in this book, which I recommend everyone read, that your word is your wand. 
you want to copy this mind map, the link is in your description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.